They say that everything old is new again. Well, if you're a television fanatic like I am, then you're probably already aware that one television network has launched a reboot of one of the greatest nighttime drama series of all time. I'm talking big hair, big Texan oil money, big belt buckles. I'm talking deceit, big hats, big Texan families. I'm talking you wake up and you find out the whole season was just a dream. Who shot JR? I'm talking Dallas. We have one of my favorite characters from that original series living here in Sarasota. She was a television bad girl. She was a vixen. She was a little sexy siren. And I'm going to sit down and talk to her. Another lifesaver? Girls are white boys should always carry plenty of lifesavers. I want to talk about you as a young actor because I heard a story that you were in the car with your mother when you <laughs> first expressed that you had been bitten by the bug. I was about five probably and my mom was um, a, a model and an actress and I used to go with her on her appointments and one day I was just, uh, she got out of the car to you know, walk in, and I was sitting in the passenger seat with the window open. And as she, t you know, walked in front of the car to let me out, I started singing at the top of my lungs out the window. And she said, "Audrey, what are you doing?" I said, "I'm singing so that a director will discover me." <laughs> I started doing school plays and local theater training, you know, as much as I could, and uh, I got my first break. I sang my song on the Merv Griffin show. There was an agent in the audience, she signed me and sent me on some auditions and one of them was for a soap opera. This is The Secret Storm. It was practically live, you know, pretty much live, mm -hmm. you know, soap opera. I mean, I, I'm an antique, I don't know. <laughs> the character was written in as a girl who sings and plays guitar, which I didn't. And I got my script three days ahead of time. and. It said, Joanna sings and plays guitar. I said, Mom, my character sings and plays guitar in this episode. So she says, well, we better get a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> then I did another soap opera after that called uh, Somerset. And again, my character had the opportunity to sing. They kind of loved that, you know, is different. <laughs> the first hit song it was a country song called The Apple Don't Fall Far From The Tree. And since I was pretty young, I didn't have a great deal of life experiences to draw upon. And so, you know, I would scour the newspapers or listen to the news or whatever to find interesting stories of people. So when The Apple Don't Fall Far From The Tree came to mind, I had read something about you know, these days you see it everywhere, but it was a young girl who was having a baby and the guy who was the daddy was not the greatest guy on earth. Let's talk about Dallas. So, Afton Cooper. Mm -hmm. She was only supposed to be in a Like well, for episodes? two episodes, okay. yeah. She was, uh, the character of Afton was written in um, to attend her brother's wedding, Mitch was marrying Lucy. I was Mitch's sister. I came in and stirred up some trouble with JR. And doing style. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right at the wedding, I mean, really. <laughs> and um, they liked the character and kept the character going. I was on the show for, off and on for eight years. Did you sleep with him? Did you? You are so full of yourself. Afton has a distinction from the other female characters on the show, right? 
Well, Afton <laughs> is the only mistress to have dumped J.R. Ewing. <laughs> of course, once she dumped J.R., she jilted him and went on to Cliff Barnes, who in the storyline was just kind of a no-good loser type, you know. And Afton became so nurturing and loving to him, it was really boring. <laughs> I mean, it was much more fun playing that devious, sexy, you know, poisoning this one and, and doing whatever. It was a fun character. Oh, yeah. you know. I have, I mean, thousands of articles and posters and magazine covers and, you know, let's see, this is the TV uh, Guide yeah. cover with Cliff. Mm -hmm. It was the number one show in like 110 countries. People were actually like camping out in front of my hotel to see me leave, you know, waiting there all night to see me leave for the airport the next day, you know. <laughs> it remained number one while I was a regular on the show. <laughs> I don't know if we're that's a coincidence, <laughs> but um, it's just one of those little trivial, mm -hmm. trivia facts, mm -hmm. you know. Talk a little bit about your working style on the show. Um, you know, like your, your work ethic or your process on Dallas as a, compared to your co-stars. When I'm working, I am working. I mean, that is, you know, it's a craft. It takes uh, focus. I don't, I, I need to get, have, be as well rested as possible, you know, and I want to be creative mm -hmm. and so you know I kind of had that work ethic throughout my years on Dallas. While you were shooting Dallas you were also working on a whole nother career almost you were another life yeah. in uh, across the seas. Yeah I was you know while I was doing Dallas I was also uh, pursuing and you know really succeeding at a recording career across the ocean. So don't Here are some of my gold records. This one is Manuel Goodbye. This was a real gold 45, you know. <laughs> this was a different album which went platinum called Wo der Südwind weht, which means Where the South Winds Blow. Oh, yeah. And it was all in English, but they gave it a German title for the German gold record. took a longer break uh, partway through Dallas to do another project. Now, Academy Award winning director Richard Attenborough brings the history making sensation to the screen. A chorus line. My mom and I were coming back from France. We got to New York. My mom checks her messages. Now remember there were no cell phones, okay? <laughs> and there was a message at her office that Richard Attenborough would like to see Audrey to, uh, for the movie A Chorus Line. Was she, you know, by chance in New York? And my mother said, well, you have like a four-hour layover. We stopped at one of the kiosks at Kennedy Airport and picked up a cassette <laughs> of the, the Broadway show, A Chorus Line, and the whole way in the car ride back, I'm, you know, listening to my song, learning it as best as I could. And I meet with Richard Attenborough, and, you know, and he's just incredible. And I read the part, and I sang a little bit, and he said, oh, this is terrific, and you know, these are the 17 finest dances. And I said, uh, well, thank you so much. <laughs> and it has been an honor, but, you know, that is not my thing. I'm not saying I couldn't dance, but not like, you know, a chorus line. I said, look, I'm not a dancer. I'm really not, okay? But I, I came here. He said, okay, so, well, how would you interpret this character? So I just did my thing. And on a scale of 1 to 10, they gave me, for dance, ten. For looks, three. Well, dance, ten, looks, three. And I'm still on unemployment. Dancing for my own enjoyment. That ain't it, kid. That ain't it, kid. Dance, ten, looks, I three. Was, I was sure, you know, I, I just like sneaked out. Thank you very much. I gotta go catch a plane. I, I left and I took a car to the airport going back to Kennedy and called my mom, you know, pay phone. And I said, oh, mom, I made it. I'm back at the airport. I'm about to catch my flight back to L.A. She said, did you not get any of the messages? I said, what? She says, you got the part. You can't get on the plane. So all my luggage went back to oh, no. L.A. and I stayed 
for the next five months. Oh, wow. And did the film. Just a dash of silicone. Shake your new Moroccos and your fine tits and ass can change your life. They should change mine. You're all looking at my tits now, aren't you? My mom definitely was my manager during the Playboy shoot and she was there. She was right there at the photo session and the famous poster picture of the strategically placed feathers. <laughs> well, those feathers were glued. You have no idea how long it took, how many oh, weeks wow. I was finding feathers. <laughs> it was a last minute idea. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we weren't really planning on doing that and then the feathers were flying and <laughs> The photographer said, oh, let's just put the feathers on them and, oh. you know, <laughs> and nothing will show. Yeah, right. Turn the fan on. Okay. <laughs> we did this <laughs> for no money just so that we would be able to approve the photos. Oh, that's smart. I guess. I'm going to keep that in mind. Not like anyone's knocking down my door for feathered place photos, <laughs> but now I know. Sarasota, Florida, how did you end up? Here, you know, what 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 would what takes a, a movie and a TV star, and and what is it about Sarasota that appealed to you? My mom, my sister, and I were doing a children's TV series called the Hugabug Club, mm -hmm. and we'd created a live show that was kind of uh, like a little rock concert for toddlers, <laughs> basically, <laughs> you know, and it was a musical stage show that was touring around the country, and we were invited to Sarasota. It turned out to be a great choice. I think it was a beautiful place to yeah. uh, raise a family and a beautiful place to live and we love it here. Oh. This is my dog child. I have real <laughs> children and then I have my dog child. Thank you. Thank oh. you for the kisses. When well, I'm in New York, okay, anywhere in New York, they recognize me. In Sarasota, nobody says anything. <laughs> oh, seriously, I think they just go, eh. so either they don't recognize me they don't care. <laughs> or, or, you know, hey, she lives here, so what's right, the big deal? Right. You know? And it's kind of nice, you yeah. know? The acting bug was bit during the Hugabug Club for another Landers family member. You're going to self destruct. Tell us a little bit about Daniel's introduction. <laughs> we were in Sarasota while the live show was going on, and Daniel was backstage holding my mom's hand, and all of a sudden he goes, my mom, to my grandma, to his grandma, you know, my mother, he goes, my mom, look over there. She said, what? She looks, he breaks free and runs right on the stage. And like that, he was in rhythm. He knew the, he knew the dance steps. He knew the words of the songs. He was center stage. And I said, okay, you know, I can't really, and he was four. Okay. <laughs> I said, I, I, and the rest of the kids were like 12, you know? So I said, I, Yes, you know, there's only so much you can hold a child back. I mean, if this is his dream, I have to allow him to follow his dream and help him, you know, improve and um, develop his craft. What do you see in Daniel as, a, as an artist? As a mother, you want the best for your child. And, you know, you want to protect them and nurture them. You don't want, you know, I really didn't want the showbiz thing because I know how painful it can be and the odds are as everybody knows, so slight in reaching your goals. Um, but, you know, you, I would never say you can't pursue this because I did the same thing and, you know, you follow your dream. Open up, don't push your luck. You're gonna self-destruct. In my head, I have pretty much cast you in several Broadway shows and I have cameos <laughs> written for you in most of my favorite TV shows right now. But what is it that you, is there something that you still have your sights set on that you think now, at this point in your life, you might want to try? It's been, you know, wonderful. And seeing both of my boys just, you know, it's, that's what life is about, you know. It's family. That's the, the most important thing ever. And so, um, you know, but I would like to, you know, maybe get back into doing something, um, mm -hmm. I haven't thought about a Broadway show because that's still like a different commitment. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. But now that my kids are on their own paths in a little, you know, a, a little bit more anyway, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. still... Venturing out of the nest. Yeah, yes. <laughs> venturing out of the nest a little bit. 
you know, that would be something to consider. I would do that. And um, Well, I've got the list ready. So okay. Then, you know, I've, you, I've got it all plotted out for you. You give it to me and, right. I'll, and I'll go after it. <laughs> <laughs> So, do you think we can expect to see a return of Afton Cooper to Dallas? Who knows? Audrey was coy and couldn't confirm anything, but there have been some internet rumors circulating that we may see a Cooper Barnes Ewing reunion. Only the television gods know for certain. You can go on Facebook and join the revolution with the Bring Audrey Landers Back to Dallas Facebook page. I'm not saying I created it, I'm just saying it exists. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm rediscovering all the great television stars from my childhood, and I will see you in front of the next television set.